So we've got a cash flow statement here. The given information relates to so fine limited. So fine, just like you. For the financial year ended 31 August 2017. So we've got information A, just some info from the income statement for the financial year ended 31 August 2017. Now, quickly, how do we find our financial year? The plus one, minus one rule. So add one day, subtract one year. If we add one day, it'll give us the 1st of September 2016 to the 31st of August 2017. So add one day, it'll take you over to the next month, the first day, and just subtract a year. So 2017 minus one gives us 2016. B, some information from the balance sheet. So the income statement is also known as the SCI, the Statement of Comprehensive Income. And the balance sheet is also known as the SFP, the Statement of Financial Position. And we've got comparative figures, 2016 and then 2017. Just take note of that. C, everything about share capital and dividends. And D, relating to fixed assets. Now, as you guys know, I prefer to put my accounting questions all in one slide but with this one it was difficult because this is an entire cash flow statement so I prefer to split it so here's the first slide and here is the second slide I've taken it straight from the answer booklet remember everything given to you in bold that's been printed by the government it's given to you but everything with a question mark that's what we need to calculate so there's a question mark here 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 so those are the line items and we've also got a few amounts so first things first, let us go down the cash flow statement. Let us calculate our income tax paid. Okay, so our income tax amount, ideally would like them to be both credit amounts. So credit and credit in an ideal world. But unfortunately, one is a debit amount and one is a credit amount. So look, guys, if it was credit and credit, it would always be you add the opening balance, you add the income tax amount that is given to you from your income statement and you subtract closing balance. That's how it usually is, right? Like if you think back to inventory, you add opening balance, you add purchases, you subtract returns and you subtract your closing balance amount. It just makes sense like that. But if they give us a debit amount and a credit amount, instead of it being like this, we subtract the opening balance immediately. We always add back that income tax amount and we always subtract the closing balance when it is on the credit side. Okay, if it was on the debit side, if it was debit, then we would add. So this is what our calculation looks like. So it's gonna be minus 2,400 plus the 187,770 minus 11,800. So let me just plug it in. And this is income tax paid. It is an outflow, money going out of the business. So 173,570 in brackets. Okay, and that's it for income tax. So that's everything from operations. So just remember it like this, OIF. So operating, investing, financing, and then you have your cash and cash equivalents amounts at the end, OIF. Okay, next, cash flow from investing activities. So the first one we need to calculate is the amount for fixed assets. That's next on our hit list. So we add our opening balance. So we started the year off with the 4975. We always subtract our closing balance. So we add this, subtract that. We also subtract any depreciation. Do you guys see it? Yep, under information A. And we've also got a bit of information regarding fixed assets. So these were transactions during the financial year. Old equipment was sold for cash at a carrying value of 324,000. So it was sold at its carrying value. So we neither made a profit or loss. So we are going to subtract this amount. Okay, it's an outflow. It's money going out of the business. I don't know if you guys hear that creaking, but two of my girlfriend's cats have entered the room. They uh, want to assist us with this fixed assets calculation. And they're just sitting looking at me. And now they're running away. And they're just sniffing everything as well. And now my girlfriend has come to fetch uh, the cats. There's two of them. They're very cute. The names are Koda and Gigi. Okay, so I, I have to move my chair now. So I'm going to go away from the mic. One of them is hiding underneath the chair. And he's uh, he's up, up, and away. Sorry, this was just a, a quick cat uh, intermission. 
You know, like you're watching a Bollywood movie. That was that was the halfway mark. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. You know, take me, take me to 10k subs, and I'll uh, I'll send you a few uh, I'll send you a few cat pics, put it on the community forum. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. Um, our purchases of fixed assets calculation. So that same opening balance, we're gonna add the four nine. Oopsie, wrong place. Let me erase that. Let's go back. So the four nine seven five zero zero zero. We're gonna subtract the depreciation amount, the three hundred and twenty-four thousand. We're gonna subtract that. Sorry, that was the carrying value, the three hundred and twenty-four thousand. We're gonna subtract the three hundred and twenty thousand for depreciation, and we are gonna subtract the closing balance amount, the six one seven seven zero zero zero. Opening balance, closing balance, depreciation, and that carrying value. But also, please note, guys, that in our next line item, we have proceeds from sale of fixed assets. Okay, you write the whole thing out. I'm just writing FA to conserve some space. And look, I know this 324000 it is not necessarily like an outflow. It's definitely going to be an inflow. It's proceeds. So we're making money, that 324000 But we need that 324000 to calculate our purchase of fixed assets. So as with everything in accounting, uh, where it's added, it must also be subtracted so that everything is in balance. It's in an equilibrium. So the proceeds from the sale of the fixed assets, it's going to be the 324000 so add the 324,000 here and the purchase of fixed assets, it's a purchase. So that's an outflow money going out of the business. So if we just add and subtract all these figures again, it will give us one, eight, four, six, zero, zero, zero. Okay. And that is it. Uh, next cash flows from financing activities. So if we just fill in everything, this is going to be proceeds from issue of share capital. I'm just going to put a dot, dot, dot. So we have a bit of space for a calculation if need be. And this is going to be a repurchase of shares. Okay, so proceeds from issue. That's always going to be an inflow. Repurchase is going to be an outflow. So the proceeds from issue, it's going to be this 150,000 times 6,3 because the company issued. So additional shares issued 150,000 ordinary shares at 6 rand 30 cents per share. I've had a lot of questions in the past from my private students like, look, sir, you guys can call me goon though. Do we ever deal with preference shares? And the answer is no, you don't deal with preference shares in accounting in grade 12. You deal with it in business studies. And for those of you that go on to study like a BCom accounting, you deal with preference shares in like accounting two and accounting three in your second year, third year, and also in honors if you go down the CA route. You do a degree that is like CA streamed. I did one of those. Interesting times. Okay, so 150,000 times 6,3, that gives you a total of 945,000. So that is money coming in and the repurchase of shares. So 70,000 ordinary shares were repurchased from shareholders on the 30th of August, 2017. And a check for 437,500 was issued for these shares. And we always plug in the total amount into cash flow. If that's not making too much sense, remember, the average price always goes into ordinary share capital. The difference between the total and the average goes into retained income. And that total amount, so what you actually paid for the repurchase of shares, that goes into cash flow. So we just plug that 437500 right in. Okay, and just for completeness purposes, look, authorized share capital, that is the number of shares that we're allowed to issue. We can issue no more than 1,200,000 ordinary shares. And uh, we had 75% of those shares in issued. 900,000 over 1,200,000. I did some quick maths. Okay, so we're looking, we're looking good here. We're, we're sitting pretty. So we've dealt with everything here in share capital and dividends except uh, interim and final. It's for another question. Interim dividends typically coming in from your retained income. Note, let us deal with cash and cash equivalents. Now, guys, this is a big NB question. Let me uh, change up colors. Okay, so we're using a blue here. Now, with cash and cash equivalents, I know it looks very easy. Like, look, we started off with 2,500. Oh, and we ended off with 23,400. Yeah, amazing. We made like 20K, give or take. It went up. It was a really good financial year. No, no, you're wrong. Backed in this bank overdraft as well. So we had 2,500 in cash. But our bank overdraft amount was 65,100. Yo, chief, we were in debt. 
on the 31st of August. What happened? Tell us, so fine. What what were you guys doing that forced you into this position where you had a bank overdraft, a massive liability of 65,100? But 2017, it was very kind to us. That overdraft, it went away and we were actually in the money. So our cash and cash equivalents at the beginning, at the beginning, our opening balance, it was the 2,500 that we had in cash minus the 65,100 of our bank overdraft. So the 2,500 minus 65,100 gave us 62,600. It's in brackets because this is a liability here. It's an outflow. And our closing balance is good. It's the 23,400. So we can just plug that in immediately. And we need to calculate this unknown value. Let's just call it X. So it's going to be X minus 62,600 equal to 23,400. And in order to solve for X, we isolate it. This negative 62,600 we have on the left-hand side, we take it over to the right-hand side and it becomes a positive. So 23,400 plus 62,600. And X is going to be equal to 86,000. And we just slot that in. And that's it. That is your cash flow statement. Nothing more. Love you, bye.